Hello everyone, welcome to another Tuesday Tech Tip here at 45 Drives. Brett here, and uh, we're doing a follow-up to our last Tech Tip, where Chris came on and talked to you about the benefits of moving to a highly available storage cluster, and why that's a great idea. And Chris did such a great job in that video, that he uh, convinced you and your bosses and whoever makes the decisions in your organization that they want to do this. They want to move to a cluster. They want to move their workflow, whatever they're currently doing, to a highly available network attached Ceph cluster. Um, and now the fun part begins, or the hard part, depending on how you want to look at it. The rubber's going to meet the road. Now you actually have to do it. So what we're going to talk about in this video is we're going to touch the same topics that Chris did. We're going to hit the same um, kind of big points, but we're just going to have a little more uh, detail or, or, or pointed questions of things you should consider. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you exactly what to do because everyone's environment is slightly different and everyone's end goal is different. Not everyone's trying to achieve the same thing. Everyone wants high available, high available storage, but there's a lot of different ways to do that. Anyway, I'm going to get into that. So uh, without further ado, let's talk about moving you to a cluster. All right, so we'll uh, be as brief but as detailed as possible. So we're gonna break this into a couple chunks. First, we'll talk about kind of the, infra the assessment of your infrastructure. And what I mean about that is like, where's this thing going? Do you have a plan for it? Everything like that. The physical environment that this uh, new storage cluster is gonna go into. Um, we're gonna talk about your network and things to ask yourself and things what needs to change. Remember, it's network attached, so network's a big part of this. Um, and we're going to talk about the kind of data backup and migration, but more think about it more as a workflow change. Um, we're going to talk about the kind of before, after, but the real good part right in the middle as you transition from one workflow to another. Um, and then the fun part of actually building the cluster and using it. All right, so the first fun step, the infrastructure assessment. What do we mean by that? Last video, Chris said, take a look at your existing hardware, IT hardware, network, and uh, if there's anything that doesn't support the new cluster you're putting or anything, upgrade it or, or just generally deal with it, right? But uh, those are all great points and we'll touch those. But there are some, uh, uh, some more fundamental things you're going to want to consider too because remember, clustering for everyone. You could be someone who's moving from just a bunch of direct attached storage USB drives to someone who has a data center under their building um, and anything in the middle, right? So we're going to break it down to the basics. The first kind of obvious thing to ask is, where are you going to put these servers? So um, you can do a HA cluster for as little as three nodes. Uh, you can use our skinny one use all the way up to our big four UXL60. So uh, there's, there's, you're going to want to stack those servers, but you're going to want to be able to get at them. So do you have a room to put them in? Do you have a rack? If you don't have a room or a rack, you should consider getting one because these things generate heat, they generate noise. It's not crazy, but it's enough that if you're used to working with direct attached hard drives and now you have a storage server, there's a little more noise generated. So you're not gonna want that directly under your desk. So do you have a, a server room you could put this in? A lot of people use a closet and call it a server room. That's not necessarily a bad thing. You just, you, you're going to want to make sure you have somewhere to put this thing. If you're the people who have the data center in the basement, do you have enough rack space? You probably have a rack already. Do you have enough use in it? Uh, the, the next thing you consider, you found a place to put these servers. Uh, power, right? Just, just general electricity. Um, these things don't require an industrial new work, um, sorry, power transformer installed outside of your building. They'll run off regular old uh, uh, wall power. But, uh, do you have one outlet in that room? Are you going to daisy chain a bunch of extension cords off each other? Don't do that. Get a proper um, surge protected power distribution bar. Do you want a UPS, uh, an uninterruptible power supply? You don't need it, but maybe you want it. Maybe you want some graceful shutdowns. If you get a UPS, do you get one that just goes into the bottom of your rack and you can plug into the wall? Or do you want it hardwired into the electricity? If you do want to do that, you're going to have to get some third-party electricians in to help you. Oh, bringing in third-party contractors, that slows projects down. Everyone knows that. So you want to plan that stuff out 
ahead of time as much as possible. Um, the other thing to consider about power, and remember this isn't for everyone, but you're buying an HA cluster. This thing is highly available and it can run if uh, certain nodes go down or anything like that. We have redundant power supplies and all these things, meaning that if one of the power, uh, power modules fails, it just keeps running on the other one. But if the main power that it's all plugged into dies, well then the whole cluster's down. Maybe you want to keep that running. Do you have generator power you can put it on? Or maybe you have dual circuits where uh, there's one, uh, one, one isolated circuit and another isolated circuit. So should like the mains power in the building get tripped on someone working upstairs or something like that, everything keeps running. Remember, you don't need these things. If someone's watching this right now and going, oh man, I gotta do all that. No, you don't. Just something to consider. The clusters are AJ, but your power might not be. So that's a general thing to consider on kind of the environment you're gonna be putting this cluster in. And there, why I bring that one up first is because if there's anything you wanna change there, you're probably gonna to have to bring in some electricians or something else like that. Any time you have to bring a third party in, it might delay your project. So try to get those ahead of times. Eliminate your latencies, get any unknowns off the table as fast as possible. But now with the kind of environment uh, infrastructure out of the way, let's talk about uh, the IT infrastructure the existing hardware you have in place. Um, do you have a network set up? If you're someone who's transitioning to a cluster from direct attached USB drives and, and maybe a, a small NAS, you might just have a couple wires running from like one server to every one little switch in someone's desk. Great, that's a common setup, works awesome. If you've got enough ports on your network, you might just be able to plug in your cluster and everything just runs that way. Maybe your switch is not fast enough. If you bought a cluster spec'd out because you want to edit um, video files off this thing and you're like, I need 10 gigabit networking, but your main switch it's attached to is running at a slower speed and then even downstream at everyone's desk, if there's other switches in the way that are slowing things down, that will um, bottleneck your brand new server cluster that you just bought. So my point here is map out your existing network infrastructure. If you don't have a network infrastructure, great, you get to put one in. We can help you do that actually. We can give you guidance and ideas of the best way to get a cost effective solution to you. Do you have an old archa archaic kind of network situation? Kind of like we had here at our own company a bunch of years ago when we upgraded to a cluster where it was kind of a, we just built the network as we went on. And we put a brand new cluster in, it was 10 gig ready, but down at everyone's desk, some of the little uh, switches people's desks were attached to were just 10 megabit switches. So maybe that, and that will suffice for most part of the company. And maybe one only group needs a higher kind of network throughput into them. But the point is, is make a map of your network if you don't have one already. Isolate where there could be bottlenecks. And, and upgrade or, or install new um, switching to do that. The other important part, switching, that's fine, but the cabling. Are you running old Cat5 cable and you want to get 10 gigabit through it? Well, you're going to have to get newer uh, uh, 6, 6A, Cat 6A, depending on the runs of your length. So again, you could do this yourself if you wanted to. There's nothing wrong with that, but remember this is there's a lot of work to that, a lot of things to consider. Maybe you want to bring in a third party again. Remember my last point, anytime you bring other groups in, it sometimes slows your project down. So have a good think of how your network attached cluster is going to get out to everyone. So the recommendations there, remember, if you have no network, great, plan one out. We can help you do that during the time of sale if you want to do that. If you already have networking and it's already like perfect, you've already kind of have 10 gig network and you, you planned ahead, great. You don't really have to do much there. You're probably somewhere maybe right in the middle and you have some older stuff, map it out, make a plan. So that's your network gear. The next thing you want to look at is maybe you can reuse some of the hardware you have already, the computer hardware, the servers, remember? Software defined storage. We have our big 45 drives clusters that you're getting from us, but maybe you've got a, a, a network attached drive that you want to use as a backup device now. Maybe the main server that you had before is like, ooh, okay, we'll replace that with the, with the cluster, but I still have this server and it still works. Can I back things up to it? Absolutely you can. 
That's what we mean by assess what you currently have, because we don't necessarily need to toss everything. We just might need to rearrange some things. We can help you with that too. So consider take inventory of everything you have current in your setup and bring that to us when you talk to us, because we can make a plan on how to best utilize everything that you currently own, plus your wonderful new 45 drive Ceph cluster. And to put a little color to that last point, uh, in a real life example, that's exactly what we did here at our company. Uh, we were running everything off a, off a single server. Um, we built a wonderful Ceph cluster, and the, the old server was perfectly fine. Actually, it was one of the first of the Backblaze units when we were still doing a lot of work with them. And we are like, well, this thing can still work as a backup. And actually, still functioning with some good maintenance upgrades as we offload a lot of like coal backups to that thing. Because why not? Still functions. So the next thing that you're really going to want to dig into when Chris talked about the data migration and backup of your data, right? How do you get off your current workflow and get to your new workflow? That's kind of the hardest part here. Why? Because it's change. Change is scary. Everyone's scared of change, but change doesn't have to be scary. Not if you put a good plan around it. There's a fun analogy we use here. Uh, how do you change the tires on a moving car? You can't stop the machine. The business needs to keep running. You can't pull over, do a bunch of downtime maintenance, and then bring it all back up. You could, but that kind of sucks. You want to change the tires on a moving car. So what do you do? Well, you shuffle everyone to one side, you change to one tire. No, no, jokes aside. Um, my point is, how do you keep using your current workflow as you do the work to move to your new one? For a real life example here, remember I said we went off our single server to our cluster. Well, we ran our single server, we built the cluster alongside of it, but we did not decommission that, that first server until everything was switched over the other thing. So we built the cluster, we configured it, we set up our redundancy, we tested everything, and we migrated the data over. We used our sync, we did all that great stuff, and we did a couple trial runs with people. We said, okay, can you connect, everything like that. But the main server was still active. It was still doing the everyday work because there's always a couple glitches. There's some things that you want to change or maybe you, uh, no, we want to try to do it this way. You know, like some little hot fixes that happen. Um, and then when, okay, everything's working, you do that final little data sync over, everything on the, on the new cluster is exactly the same as the old cluster. You, you switch the IPs over and then all of a sudden everyone starts hitting the new cluster rather than hitting the old cluster. We changed the tires on a moving car. The business did not stop. We didn't have to tell everyone from this hour to this hour, uh, you can't do any work. We didn't have to really have anyone come in overnight and do, do the midnight work to switch all this over. We did it while we were running. We did it live. And that's what we want to help you guys too. And that's part of this process. You, as the end user of this cluster, know your work environment better than anyone else. You know your business. That's why we're all in this game, because we're giving you infrastructure to keep you up and running so you can keep doing the things you want to do. So based on what your goals are, we can help you achieve a kind of scenario of where you can take the tires off your moving car and not impact your business. So those are some uh, kind of deeper thoughts to put into your plan. Again, not a step-by-step -step recipe. It's going to be different for every person, remember but a couple deeper things to think about as you uh, plan your transition from your single server or your external hard drives to your new storage cluster. Assess your infrastructure. Where are you going to put the thing? Do you get the power? All that, that, that almost boring stuff that you don't think about till it's time to do it. Um, your network architecture. What can you change? What can you keep? What of your current setup can you keep? Um, your workflow changes. What are you able to stop, the, stop and do a migration time? Do you have to keep the, uh, the car running at all times? All those things to consider. If I said anything in this video that almost scared you a little bit, as in like, oh geez, I gotta bring electricians in? What kind of power? Uh, no, not necessarily. My point is, just consider it. The best part of making a project go smoothly is identify all the things that could go wrong, the project killers, as early as possible. All the things that can delay a project longer than you want it to be, Identify those as soon as possible, make a plan around them, decide what's right for you, and then you can take something that is relatively scary, change, and not make it that bad. And remember, 45 Drives is here to help you do this. We want to take you from 
what you're doing now and give you that peace of mind of a highly available cluster so you can just stop worrying about is your data available. So give us a call, tell us what your plan is, and we'll help you achieve your dreams together.